Okay, hope everyone has a copy of the scriptures that I plan to be using today. A simple question today that we want to come to the correct solution. In what or whom should we trust? There are some things that are not trustworthy. There's only one that is. And we want to find that today. But in the book of Jeremiah chapter 17, let's read beginning uh, with verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 17. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be man, cursed be the man, that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the purchased places in the wilderness, in a salt land and not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be like as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh. But her leaves shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Then he says, verse 9, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? He's talking about the human seed of man's being. Verse 10, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. As a partridge sitteth on eggs and hatcheth them not, so he that getteth riches and not by right, or if he gets riches the wrong way, shall leave them in the midst of his days, and at his end shall be a fool. A glorious high throne from the beginning is a place of our sanctuary. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed. They that depart from me shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. All right, we'll hold up with these other verses in a moment. But it's been said that all men rely and trust upon something in life. We have something that we think stabilizes us. Even what we call the shrink or the psychiatrist recognize this. That a person has to have something they feel grounded in. People need something or someone in who to believe or which to believe. And in our day especially, the men need to find a stabilizer. People are living in a state of hypertension. And our Lord told us, and I believe I read a Sunday, last Sunday, the Sunday before, that men's heart would be failing them for fear of things coming on this earth. Now, Jeremiah 17, 5, again, the first verse we read. Let's look again. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be man that trusteth in man, maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart de departeth from the Lord. You let that sink in a moment. Cursed be man that trusteth in man. Because man by himself is not trustworthy. You're not trustworthy. You ever do anything you said you wouldn't do? 
We all have, haven't we? You can't trust the old human heart. This has always been true. But there is a guilt because of sin that man has to face. And because of that guilt, men seek to turn to something they can rely on. There's some things that men trust in that are untrustworthy for salvation. And those things are what we want to major on this morning. And Jeremiah said in verse 5, themselves, cursed be man that trusts in man. And that includes oneself. The flesh is not dependable. Look at verse 9. We read a moment ago. Somebody said, I'm, I'm a, somebody says, I'm a pretty good person, not too bad. Let's read what the Lord said. Look at verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately good. Desperately wicked. Right. Who can know it? Folk, that pretty well sums it up. That you can't trust yourself or some other man. But the man that follows his own heart is deceived. There's a scripture that's quoted twice in the Bible. It says, there is a way that seemeth right unto man. There's a way that seemeth right. But the end thereof are the ways of death. A lot of people have that opinion. Oh, I'm just as good as those people that go to church. That's probably better in some ways. Folks, self-righteousness will not save. Never has, has it? But how many are trusting in themselves? Drop down, if you would, on your, back to your paper, Romans 10, verse 3. Look what it says plainly. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Somebody said, I'm going to turn over a new leaf. Well, that's great, but let the Lord turn that leaf over for you. Put your trust in Him. But all too many have their faith in other men. Israel truly loved their king, King David. But David let them down, didn't he? Took an innocent man, a good man, took his wife, got her pregnant, so forth, and wound up having the man killed. And all Israel, and God said, David, the worst thing you've done is you've caused the people to belittle me, or God, because of his actions. And look at his son that followed along behind David. Solomon in all of his wisdom. And the scripture proclaims the wisest man that ever lived. People still marvel at the things that Solomon did. But what did he do? He took a thousand women 700 wives, 300 concubines. You imagine that? <coughs> but he started worshiping their gods, which were heathen gods. He made altars to them. Somebody said, well, if Solomon did it, I can do it. Yeah, you can pay the price if you want to do it. Whatever a man sows, he's going to reap. You don't want that, folks. 
But there are some that trust in other men. I prepared this message uh, earlier. In today's newspaper, <coughs> y'all see the picture from where you are. This is the Houston Chronicle, religious section. By the name of Khan. He's the Ayman equal to a pastor in a Muslim church. Well, they've got a fellow coming this week. They say it's once in a lifetime experience. Once in a lifetime. Now, here's what he says To truly understand the importance of His Holiness coming to Houston. You have to look at the status he has in our eyes, Khan says, I'm in Khan. We see him as our spiritual father. We see him as the most holy person in the world. Uh -huh. Folks keep coming here. I'll show you a picture. You may not see it where you are, but if you got a chronicle today, there he is. We'll try to read his name. <laughs> I'm warning you folks, the paper said this is going to be a great thing, according to the Muslims. Mirza Mazrur Ahmad, the fifth Khalifa and head of the worldwide Ahmadiyya Muslim community, making a much anticipated visit to the Houston area. Muslims are trusting in that. And they say he's a holy man. The, Pope, the Roman Catholic Church have been worshiping the Pope for a long time. According to their doctrine, the Pope is to be infallible. Mm, wicked. Mm. Isn't that something? I said according to their doctrine. And yet he's allowed these monster priests to molest these little boys and destroy their life. Up in Pennsylvania, they've been investigating and they've got over a thousand cases. And they do it in the name of religion. When they're supposed to be educating the boys on the things of God, they're educating them on the things of the devil. But it says, don't talk about my friend. God says it's wrong. It's not my decision. The Lord said, judge you not. That's a fact. But if God judges, it's his judgment and not mine. Amen. But people have tended to trust in other men. If you will, look down to your next verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 12. The church at Corinth, way back under, 1900 years ago, they became preacher followers. And look what he says in, in 1 Corinthians 1, verse 12. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I of Apollos, and one said of Cephas, and one of Christ. Some of them said, well, Paul's my preacher. And others said, Paulus is my preacher. Others said, Cephas or Peter is my preacher. And others said, hey, Christ is who I'm worshiping, which is the correct one. But people have become preacher followers over the years. I had a fellow tell me years ago that he wouldn't belong to any church that a certain man wasn't a pastor. In other words, if he belonged to a church, that man's going to be the pastor of the church. Well, this fellow had been dead in about now about uh, 25 or 30 years, and the man that said that 90 years old now. So he's got to be a church, a member of a church if he's a member somewhere where this guy's not the pastor. In other words, he became by default or choice the worshiper of a man. Oh, that's wrong. You can't trust yourself, much less somebody else. 
That's what the scripture says here. Cursed is man that trusts in man. And then there's some that trust in their riches. We've been hearing a lot about the lot of numbers have because they're so astronomical right now. I believe they said the mega, mega, mega million was up to $1.6 million, billion dollars. $1.6 billion. Before we all need money to survive, don't we? To live on. But that would destroy someone to have that much money. He'd have a big responsibility to dish it out the way God would have him to do it. But some people trust in the riches, if you will. Look at verse 11 we read a moment ago. In the middle of your page, middle of the page. As a pottery sitteth on eggs and hatcheth them not, so he that getteth riches and not by right, or if he gets it the wrong way, shall leave them in the midst of his days, and at his end shall be a fool. Well, riches can't buy your way to heaven. Now, if you would look at James chapter 5, the bottom of the page, James 5, verse 1. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries, for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, it's like cancer, and the rest of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You've heaped up treasure together for the last day. Well, riches have destroyed some people. But you can't trust in them for salvation, can you? It's impossible. In this same article that I read a moment ago, another illustration I would use is a picture of a gal that we all knew, especially when I was a young man. Miss Marilyn Monroe. And what was she in the religious section for? When she married Arthur Miller, she converted over to Judaism, the Jewish religion. And they have her prayer book, her personal prayer book, that they're getting ready to auction off. But folks, let me tell you something. If a person died with the Jewish religion, which does not believe in Christ, then they're not going to make it. Right. Y'all realize that? That the Lord made a promise to the Jews, but the Jews turned away from him? Yeah. And some of them, especially like the Pharisees, they claimed that they kept the law of Moses, which was a, an erroneous claim, because no one's ever kept the law, have they? But do some people even trust in their church membership? Folks, I've heard people say, well, I joined the church. Well, that's great. I, I believe a person should be a member of the Lord's church. Because the Lord designed and set up his church as a means to serve him. And he gave the church a commission to carry out on this earth. To me, it's an honor to be able to be a member of one of the Lord's true churches. But church membership, it didn't save Judas Iscariot, did it? And Judas was a treasurer of the first church. The Bible said Judas went to his own place, and I'm going to let y'all figure out where that place was. But it says he was never a child of God. He was a devil from the beginning and abode not in the truth. That's what it says. But folk, it all boils down there, but one that can be trusted. You can't trust yourself. You can't trust this preacher or no other religious figure because they've got that carnal heart. It's still there. But if you would, look back at verse 7. Jeremiah 17, verse 7. Blessed is the man 
that trusteth in the Lord. And whose hope the Lord is. Folks, he's the only one that can be trusted. Now you can tell me all about your sins if you want to, and I don't care to hear them because the Lord said, confess your sins to God, confess your faults one to another. I can't forgive the sin, so I just soon not hear it. God wants us to trust him. He's always been good for his word. And folk, he can be trusted. No matter what the circumstances may seem. And the one who trusted him shall not be ashamed. That's what verse 13 tells us. Read it again in the middle of the page. O Lord, the hope of Israel. All that forsake thee shall be ashamed. They that depart from me shall be written in the earth because they've forsaken me, the Lord, the fountain of living waters. But folk, if we don't forsake him, we're in the right place. We'll not be ashamed. But what happens then when a person put their trust in the Lord, they get saved? Look at verse 8. And this is a key to our whole lesson. If you don't pick this one up, you've missed the whole point. For he, the person that trusts in Christ, shall be as a tree planted by the waters. And he that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaves shall be green and shall be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. The Lord said the, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Not the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the righteous. Our soul winners that go out knocking on doors, they're bringing forth other fruit. And that's what we're to be, is fruit bearers. And whom are we trusting? Well, folks, there's a lot of things you can trust and you just take this paper that I'm letting out. They got a big write-up about uh, Muslims and the next one a big write-up about Hindu and then about the Jewish religion. But any of those other than Christ is a failure. But my friend, if you want your sins covered, then it's by the blood of the Lamb. <laughs> 